Okay, this how-to video is going to show you um, how to use the associative dimensioning inside the Cadence PCB tools. So I've got a finished design here. Uh, maybe what I want to do is add some dimensions to some tooling corners, to some uh, board edges to give the PCB fabricator um, some more information about this PCB. Some people will just send out a, a, a design outline, maybe the, the, the outline and, and create an artwork and put that as part of my artwork films and my RPC 2581 uh, output data. Uh, but I want to maybe give a bit more um, tolerancing information, maybe add some notes to my manufacturing and, and create a fabrication drawing um, and be a bit more specific about the data that I want to send out. So what I can use for that is we can use the manufacture draw, uh, dimension environment. So as soon as I enter that, the, the command window tells me enter the dimension environment, use the right mouse button menu to change the dimension mode and I'm currently in show dimension mode. So. <laughs> What I can do is do a right click in, in blank space on the canvas and I then get the different options. So I can do things like um, different torques, so linear dimension, datum dimension, angular dimension. I can do things like align dimension, uh, move dimensions, move the text, refresh the dimensions, do some instrument parameters. And I'll show a couple of examples of these here now. So we'll start off with the parameters, which is where the settings are, where you would define which settings you want to use. So we've got different standards we can follow. So if I want to follow the ISO standard, what my units are going to be. We look at the text and I've got a different text box and I can go and change this to suit. Um, and you might want to just adjust this to suit your sizes. Don't specifically follow what I'm following in here, but you can obviously change the text box size to suit this. And you can have a, a, a name to follow that if you want to use that. Um, I want to use a leading zero. Um, what sort of kind of diameter symbol location do I want to use? Um, what scaling factor do I want to use? Um, so I want decimal places to three locations in millimeters, uh, and I want to use dual dimensions here to two decimal places. And I'll leave it as a right of the primary location. Um, I can add plus or minus dimension values, and I can add some uh, angular dimensions uh, I want to two decimal places. The lines then, do I want to use uh, termination locations, or I do want to use arrows, arrows, so I'm gonna have fill the arrows and I'm going to specify the size, so maybe I want to reduce the size of this to maybe 3 by 0.75 a millimetre. And you've got uh, different options as well for kind of line suppressions. There's also balloons, so if you want to add a, like an assembly drawing and add assembly balloons, you can add the size and the textbook that you want to use for that as well. And then there's also a tolerancing location, so if you want to include tolerancing, you can add the tolerancing and give upper and lower limits as well. Once you're happy with that, we'll click OK. I'm then going to do a right click to go into something called linear dimension. We'll start off, so I'm going to use uh, this tooling corner, go into the board edge. Two options to, to pick what you want to choose. So I can, uh, it says pick the pick an element to start off. So I'm, I can just pick the pin. And it has actually given me a cross here. Uh, so it's found the first point, pick the second point. Um, what we'll also do actually, just turn the colors on. Let's go to the, the, the geometry folder. We've got a dimension option, so we'll just enable that and we'll just turn it on to maybe yellow to make it a bit brighter to see. We'll hit apply and OK. So you'll now see effectively this crosshair um, as my first object. So my second object, I could just come along and select it, or I could be a bit more specific and say right click, snap, pick two. And this is the better method I would choose. So I would do a right click, snap, pick to pin for this, and a snap, pick two, maybe segment vertex to give me a different location. So I've got two options. I can either place the, the, the text for the Y or for the X dimension, and I get the leader lines coming down in both options. You, you click in between the leader lines to, to confirm the location. So if I click in here, I effectively get my first lot of text, 25.4 and an inch. I want to change that, and I'll show you how to change that in a minute, but we'll select the location. So the second one, because I'm, I'm still in the dimension mode, I'm just going to do right click, pick to pin, pick the option again, pick the option here, and effectively I get the text uh, coming out and I can then go and click to place the text. So I want to change these, both of these. So I'm going to do right click instance parameters, pick the text, and then I get the instance mode again. And in this scenario, what I want, I want the text below the primary, not above. So I click OK and it then adjusts the text. So this is what the instance parameters does. So while we're still in this mode, we'll make the same change to this. So we'll make this one uh, below, click OK, and it tidies up the text. We can then use the right click move text and maybe shorten the location of where the text is going to be. 
Um, let's make that change permanently. So we'll do a right click parameters, go to the text command and say below. Okay, so any new dimensions that I add in from now on will be below in the similar location here. So let's go and do, um, we'll do another linear dimension. So we'll pick effectively the tooling hole. We'll zoom in here, we'll do a right mouse button, snap pick to uh, segment vertex. Um, I want it in the X direction, so we'll click OK here. And I can then go and throw the text down here. Same scenario here, let's just do an oops there. Um, I want to do a uh, align dimension, so I can then effectively align this one with this one, and I get the text aligned. So lots of different options here. We'll do a, another one, let's do a radial dimension. So I'll right click radial dimension, and I can click the arc. So this one you're just putting the line, the leader to where you want it to go. Once you're happy with it, select the, the final location, then do a right click, and uh, we'll do a done, and then that then physically places the text in the correct location um, with the leader lines that I've got. Lots of different options for dimensions. So you can obviously do if you need to delete dimensions. We've got manufacture dimension environment, right mouse button delete dimensions and you can then come and delete the dimension highlight it to choose it but the advantage of having um, associative dimensioning is that let's just say I, I added the my dimensions in I then need to go and maybe move my my tooling corner so let's go into the move command we'll get the tooling corner so make sure my fine pane has symbols we'll pick that and let's go and move this uh, maybe ix.5 and you'll see that this dimension then dynamically updates so I'm not having to redo the dimension again so it's updated both of these dimensions to suit because I've moved it 0.5 in the in the x direction.